Thank you very much, uh, Adrian. David, please come back. Uh, so we, we open the floor for uh, questions for two uh, very interesting and provocative uh, talks. So who wants to start? Yes, there's the first one there. And then, yes, uh, please, and also Pedro. And no microphone, so. Uh, oh, OK. First question, I have two questions actually, one for David and one for Adrian. The first question I want to ask you, David, is which were the links, if there were any links, uh, between Siderman and the local political organizations of Tucumán, I don't know, maybe the Peronism, Peronism the ERP, or whatever, uh, in also considering that uh, the, 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 the province of Tucumán was intervened during uh, Operativo Independencia. So that's the question for you. The question for Adrian is, um, in this wave of emigres to Israel, Argentinian emigres, as we see, uh, we saw that um, the case of this uh, repressor, I don't remember his name, uh, that was discovered by uh, Shlomo Slutsky. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name. Gauto. Gauto, Gauto. Gauto. So back then, did we see any kind of uh, emigres that were supported, like on the side of the dictatorship or on the side of the guerrillas that were not necessarily Jewish, and they they like took advantage of the flow to Israel to like, you know, con uh, concealed their 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 identity and. You know, these guys themselves as Jewish emigres. Okay, That's we take my... a few more questions uh, to Pedro and then uh, here. Pedro here, in front of you. Short questions, please. Castellano. Castellano. David, no pude entender la relación del caso Siderman con el problema de identidad judía. No pude entenderlo. Parece, me parece más como el estudio de un, eh, no quiero llamar a alguien que metió la mano en la lata o estaba metido con Busi o que tuvo problemas con Busi y de eso hacer un estudio sobre problema de identidad en Tucumán. Pregunta si Siderman estaba en alguna relación con los Osatinsky eso puede ayudar, o Satinsky es el familia inserta en Montoneros, en Tucumán, que tenía relaciones económicas también con los judíos en Tucumán, si eso pudo derivar en algún eh, eh, comportamiento especial con Siderman. Con respecto a Adrián, yo siempre supe de que la parte económica es la parte que eh, induce a la alía e induce a la hierida. En lo que respecta a la hierida, eh, no por casual los años que aparecen como los años que mayor eh, porcentaje de judíos que vuelven a Argentina son los años de la plata dulce en Argentina. Si hacemos la cuenta, 79, 80, 81 es la época de la plata dulce y eso puede ser una causa para aquellos argentinos que llegaron a Israel y no se adaptaron, que vuelvan a la Argentina. Okay. Y lo último, eh, porque me pusiste nervioso, pusiste el, 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 la reunión de los dirigentes argentinos en agosto de, mil, eh, eh, de 1977, una de las cosas que te olvidaste que estos eh, dirigentes pidieron homenaje en Begin, es cerrar todas las no, no arjalucianas porque son eh, cunas de la guerrilla y van a matar a todos los jóvenes judíos. Okay. Uh, here Marshall is, Mayer. Okay, you. very short questions, please. Okay. Yes, for you. I can talk to Mike. Okay, very short question, please. Yeah, okay. okay. And then you answer. Then My name is Shmuel, and I want uh, to ask you next question. We know that. Uh, in time of dictatorship regime in Argentina, Israel continued to collaborate 
visë agitinja në gjithjajme, Israel kontinue të të provajte të agitina vjupon teknologjis, teknologjikal solutions, e ndisë onë background of oppressions against agitinja në gjusë, dhe të vëzë members in different organizations of human rights, communist, socialist parties, and I want to receive answer on this question in relation to this very important subject. Thank you very much, and it was brief. So maybe you answer the questions, and then we see if we have another round of questions. So please, David. Keep the order. Thank you for those questions. Uh, I thanked the important people at the Abraham Center. I also want to thank Hanan for the invitation and <laughs> Stefan for the invitation to be here. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Uh, first to uh, Ezekiel's question, uh, the, it's an easy answer, I don't know. So uh, my sources so far are archival sources in the United States and from various branches of government in Argentina, including the judicial record. And I've also looked at media, newspapers from Tucumán. I picked specific years around episodes that relate to Siderman, and I couldn't find anything. So I don't know. Um, there may be contacts that I haven't found yet. Um, I mean, I could speculate, but you could also speculate. Uh, in terms of the second question, um, you know, you put me in a difficult situation because, in, in essence, I made an argument and you weren't convinced. Um, <laughs> look, I think there's a dominant narrative. I, I have to repeat myself, in essence. There is a dominant narrative to the Jewish experience in Argentina under dictatorship. That narrative was structured in many ways, and Timerman, as I just suggested obliquely and quickly, was a major figure, figure in structuring that narrative of the Jew as victim of Nazi violence. That was very strong, and Timerman was very adept at structuring it in front of a congressional committee in the United States and the international media and so on. Um, for many Argentines, Jews and others, it has been socially unacceptable since 1983 to recognize if their relationship with the dictatorship was anything other than bad in lots of ways. So one author who has begun to deal with this in, excellent, in an excellent book is Immanuel Kahn, who's raised questions about it. I like the Siderman case for two reasons. One, it's an excellent example of a subversive narrative where the idea of the Jewish victim is there, but there is much more to this story, even leaving aside what I could not mm -hmm. demonstrate or not. And by the way, you know, there were people talking about the Nisman killing. Like the Nisman killing, I suspect at this point that I could spend six months in judicial records and it would not be clear whether Siderman in fact committed fraud for a sixth time. But it, it disrupts that narrative. Um, that becomes very important because there are also lots of other cases of Jews who had subversive experiences during the dictatorship associated with their Jewish identity. I don't want to start listing those off, but you know, everyone from non-commissioned officers uh, in the military who, who were practicing observant Jews who believed in the military mission to others who had good experiences as draftees or uh, fell in love and had happy experiences those times. Those issues of Jewish identity are uh, tapados. And are, many Argentines, as I say, just to repeat, have come out of 1983, and it is clear to them that it's socially unacceptable to bring up these stories of a kind of normalcy associated with Jewish life in Argentina. Any other comment? No. Okay, Adrian. Okay, thank you for the questions, uh, Ezekiel. I I did not find any evidence about someone like uh, this uh, military uh, coming to here in those days, but about 
people that were not uh, Jews or from Jewish origins, and they were involved in guerrilla actions or something. Uh, there were many cases of those that got married just to come here with their, sometimes with their, their partners, sometimes just to come here to, ex to, ex to escape. And I think Israel was like not really uh, paying attention to these kind of things. They, it was okay to do it. Um, Pedro, um, the economy as a factor to return to Argentina. Uh, well, I, I found that the uh, economy has a stronger, uh, a stronger impact to, to make people leave Argentina than to make people come to Argentina. But it, it, it is, um, we, we could talk about uh, this longer, but uh, during the 70s, I am not sure that people went back to Argentina because of the Plata Dulce, because it was a process of financial, financial um, bicicleta financiera in Argentina, the financial bicycle mm -hmm. is, uh, in practical terms, to gamble in the stock markets and with the debt bonds. And this was not the profile of this, those migrants, but, um, but uh, of course, the, the possibility of not finding a job here that you mentioned, of course, it, it is a very important one. And um, the, the proceedings of the, the meeting with Menachem Begin, the proceedings did not mention this you said, but uh, about the complaint of the Jewish agency emissaries or shlichim educating the youth to, to join the left. But I found this complaint in several other documents. It, uh, it made sense because during that time, but, but I think it is unfair. It was unfair to accuse the emissaries to teach the, the Jewish youth to, to be a leftist because they were trying just to compete to other ideological offers that were uh, more popular. Uh, sometimes they believed on that, of course, uh, leftist movement, Ashomer uh, um, Atzair and others, they believed in those ideas. But uh, this complaint, like, uh, the emissaries from Israel are putting our kids on risk. I, I found it in several documents. Not about this meeting, but I, I, I found it. And uh, I don't know if you mentioned the selling of arms and technology mm -hmm. yes, to the exactly. militaries. And I would tell you that um, a couple of things. Mm, it is a, it is a, a controver controversial issue for many people. Uh, not for me. I, I came to the conclusion that states, they continue their businesses as, as uh, states. And the two basic, maybe, maybe I stopped considering this a controversial issue when I started to study international relations. And, uh, <laughs> and I understood that the two principles that comes from after the end of the the 100 years war uh, is that uh, one nation is not going to interfere in the other nation uh, internal affairs and that nations uh, are going to be communicated through their ambassadors. But going to this particular issue, the Israeli uh, embassy in Argentina, I, I got uh, different um, reports and they said that a problem of the Jewish community in Argentina at, at that time, the organized Jewish community, was that their leaders were not connected for the first time, no connection to the government, no connection. No Peronist, no uh, radical um, in, the in the Argentine sense of radical, the Union Civica Radical. There were not uh, any links to the government. Uh, the military in Argentina were a kind of uh, a, a, a sector apart from society and the Jews were not connected. So the Israeli embassy sometimes was a, a kind of 
uh, a key player to make them being in touch. And just uh, to add something, the kind of military equipment and training that was useful in the Falklands or Malvinas war was not related to the illegal repression or and was a minor part of uh, the same commerce uh, pursu pursued by uh, other Western democracies like Holland, France, the United States, just to mention. Okay, thank you very much to Adrian and David for an amazing uh, panel. We have a coffee break.